Good afternoon, fellow modelers. It's Jaeger262. Welcome back to part seven of my Plague Lord. Sort of how to paint, painting. That's not really tutorials, but um, it's just, hey, here's how I painted this guy. So, tone down the veins in the arm and everything after yesterday's video. Right? Yesterday. Um, redid the blood, all that. And quite happy with how it looks. The only problem is, is that for whatever reason, I think I mixed instead of a light gray wash, an oil wash. No, I didn't. But hmm, I don't know what happened. Whatever happened, if you can see it, um, I gotta get better lighting. It's uh, there's like a gloss over a lot of him where there shouldn't be gloss, and especially on the veins and the arms just a gloss coat that should not be there and I don't know where it came from or how it got there so that kind of sucks I'm going to try to mat it but I'll have to buy a matte coat for brushes because the only ones I have are just aerosols unfortunately but other than that really happy with how he turned out and today is the video I was supposed to make yesterday and that is the armor green and so what I'm going to be using for that is the Vallejo model air US light green which is actually what his helmet is now it's like a very bright kind of green and then I'm going to chip it and kind of age it with just the death card green base paint from Citadel and the reason for that is I mean there's a lot of other colors I could use I have a lot of greens to be completely honest I'm just using this one because it's Death Guard Green, and I am painting some Death Guardsmen, and it's, it has that added factor of just being a Nurgle-based paint, which is kind of fun. Let me see if this works real quick. That's a little too bright, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, there's a lot of shadows where there shouldn't be. It's going to make it hard, I guess, to see. But I'm going to keep this light here for now. Maybe. There we go. Okay, so now i got a lot of lights on my guy. And you can see, maybe you can see that gloss sheen better. Anyway. I don't actually like how the helmet came out. Vallejo Model Air, as its name suggests, is made for airbrushing, so it is a very, very thin paint. And this is about four coats right now, and it's still not completely opaque. Uh, so what I've decided to do is I'm going to base the whole thing with Death Guard Green, because it is a base paint. And then go over the Death Guard Green with the US Light color and basically chip with the death guard green anyway so it's still the same process and i know it sounds a little convoluted but i will be sorry just trying to mix my paints i will be basing it with just a thicker paint so i only need one coat hopefully of the u.s light green And if the color doesn't really match the helmet too well, I'll just repaint the helmet. So yeah, thin coats are what you want for models, absolutely, before I start getting that kind of people saying that in the comment section. That's true. You do want thin coats for brushing, but in this case, too thin, which is exactly what you have with Vallejo Air. And hold on. You really can't see that color. It's way too. Yeah, it's way too bright. Let me. Let me just work like this. It'll be dark, but oh well. Vallejo Model Air color is super, super thin, and so you have the opposite problem of thick paints, where it's like you catch brush strokes and it mucks detail up. This one, it doesn't really cover anything, 
and it acts like a wash and you can actually just drown out details just as much as you could with a thick paint just because it gets into the surface or it gets into those crevices when it's thin and then gunks it up coat after coat after coat so you want to have a paint that's this kind of consistency thin enough for coverage or thick enough for coverage thin enough to hide brush strokes now of course brush strokes do get hidden over multiple coats but doesn't hurt to try and hide them yourself and I don't actually have a good tip for how to do brush strokes um, I've never been a fan of brush painting unless it's very small details and very small surface details so I usually just airbrush but from what I hear is if you just do you pull the brush never push that's just basic brush care if you do long strokes not what I'm doing there but long strokes be completely consistent with the flow of the brush then it should at the very least hide those strokes after some time and I'm just trying to keep it the same color consistency throughout. Getting into these tricky spots where he's got his horns sticking out. Let's see, there's the basic first coat. I might have to do a second coat of Death Guard Green in the back there. Oh man, just hit him on my lamp. Sorry, just, it's hard to see over the camera, so I'm just taking a quick look at the back of the armor plate here. It might have thinned my paint just a little bit too much. But again, nothing multiple coats won't fix. And we're just going to apply the same color and same method to the boots. And if I can get paint onto the brush. I'm really sorry about this lighting. It is awful. I don't know why. It's usually not this bad, but... Yeah, this is kind of tough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish painting this base color off camera. And then I'm going to come back show you the U.S. Army light green over it, which is going to be the final stage before chipping and edge highlighting. And for the purpose of what I'm doing, it will be the same as a normal Warhammer style heavy metal edge highlight. But I'm actually going to be using it to chip the colors and make them look battle damaged. So I'm going to take a break here, then start up with that next step, stop, start up with the next one, and so on and so forth. So you won't see me paint the entire mini. You'll see me basically apply the techniques to the shoulder pad each time. And then I'm going to show you the finished one all together because it's kind of hard for me to see in the lighting and kind of get around the camera so I'll be right back alrighty so we did the death guard green station it's a very pale light green as you can see here the green on the helmet is completely done I did that in that step as well it's a very bright green you can see it right if I angle it into the lamp turn that off so we stop getting interference um, 
So yeah, fairly bright. And the reason I'm doing such a bright green for Florida Plagues or anything miracle is because, and I don't know it too well, so I'm not going to claim to be like some kind of an expert on it or anything, but in Age of Sigmar, how it works is there are eight mortal realms. It's like the fantasy version of Warhammer. Eight mortal realms. Each have like their own gimmick or their own thing that makes them interesting and interesting location within the Age of Sigmar kind of lore. And Nurgle populates, or his armies I should say, because he's a chaos god, populate Gyron. And I'm not really sure if I'm saying that right. But it is the realm of life. The realm of vibrant gardens, forests, that kind of thing. There's a faction there that battles Nurgle that's actually just living trees. Which is pretty cool, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's it. He is, as anybody knows, in Warhammer. Nurgle is one of the four chaos gods. He is the god of death and decay. And so that makes the most sense that he is warring for the realm of life. It is the most luscious of all the realms, and obviously has the most things there to corrupt and decay. So this is like a pretty cool little tidbit. And so I wanted to do a very vibrant green for his armor. Just to kind of go with that theme, even though Nurgle's armies themselves aren't that vibrant. Just to give it that feel of a very vibrant color. Sorry, it's hard to paint and like put ideas together. So yeah. Ugh, I keep doing it off camera, I'm so sorry. There's a lot of paint on the brush. I really loaded it up. I didn't know. It's another thing I don't like about the Vallejo paints. It's really easy to load a brush up. So yeah, there is that. And I will be doing that to the rest of the Oh, I forgot. This is supposed to be green. Okay, well, I'll do that to the rest of the armor and then we'll get to chipping. Alrighty, so my plan actually didn't end up working. And so this is still about four or five coats of the Vallejo Model Air color. It is a very, very thin color. Sorry about that. Um, but now we're going to do the edge highlight slash chipping. And this is going to work exactly like any other edge highlight. We're going to be using the Death Guard base plate. So just very thin. Now the only thing different from this than a normal edge highlight is you'll see I'm trying to break up the actual line a little bit. And that's because we want it to. There we go. There's some paint on there. Focus. We want it to chip. Or look like chips anyway. In the armor. to get some decent paint out of a Citadel pot and I don't know if anybody else I mean I know there's some other modelers who agree and they're just like hey thin it it'll be fine but man Citadel makes some really bad paint in, in terms of just paintability um, with a brush and that's not because the paints are actually bad themselves it's just because the trade-off is you need maybe one coat at the most.
roof. Okay, you can't see that with the light. Whew, sorry about that. But as you can see, there's some highlights now. It looks like there's some subtle chipping. Uh, where's my brush? There it is. Around the edge here, touching up on these, putting it there, highlighting the tops here. And so that's all I'm going to do for this step right now because I'm going to show you the rest of how I'm going to chip this miniature. And there's a couple of stages to chipping. So once we have our basic, here's where the chips are going to be in light green. I'm going to take a toothpick and go over that again with a dark gray. Oh, I don't know if I have a dark gray color. I'm going to mix black and chrome to make a sort of pseudo gun metal color. I'm going to chip with that. It's going to be one part chrome. And that's Vallejo Model Air Chrome and Vallejo Model Air Black. And I know for someone who doesn't like brushing these on, although with a toothpick, I find it's a much more, um, much more what? It's just a better experience in general, I guess. It's better coverage, we'll say that. Anyway. more it's gonna be two parts black decided to change it up because this color doesn't really look too good the Vallejo modeler chrome and then I know they have Vallejo metallics I've never tried the metallics but for a acrylic metallic chrome it's crazy good in my opinion usually you would do one of dark gray one of chrome and go back and forth but for the purpose of this miniature at least for this video i'm just going to mix the color keep it real simple so wow it is really hard to see without that light you're just going to go at least like on the inside towards the edges more with the metal color And that's pretty much it. You can see where the metal is and you can see where the light... I'm going to go over the light green again for this. But uh, that's essentially it. And then I will show you what it looks like completed. Alright guys, so I'm going to come back to the chip. I just realized how long this video is, so I haven't done anything yet. I'm just going to upload this one for basic armor. The Death Guard green is not only not working, but it's actually looking really awful on the paint. So we're going to have to find a different color to use other than that to chip it. And I have a couple of Vallejo model air colors to use. I'm going to try that and I'm just going to use dark gray and go the proper channel so they don't like the gun metal color I mixed. And I will do all the chipping all that probably off camera. Because hopefully I'll be going to a local builder's night for Warhammer. And I'll be doing it there. But if not, I'll film that for you in a separate video. Thank you so much for watching it this long. I cannot believe how I was doing it split up in stages. And I just, I let the time get away from me. So thank you so much for watching. And I love the support. I really appreciate it. Please throw up a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified for any videos I make in the future. Or for the rest of the videos in this series. And as always, thank you so much for watching.